Hello, this is your host Preet, and this tutorial is about free R class queues. So it, it requires that uh, you already understand how to create tasks. Suppose in, this tutorial goes into a little bit of more detail about queues. So what I've got here is an Rx and a Tx task. The Tx task will send items to the queue. The Rx task will get items up from the queue. I've created a queue here by saying queue handle equals to x queue create. Two is the number of items the queue can hold. And the second parameter is the size of one item. So let's just go over to the TS, TX task now. Now there's an item uh, with integer being set to zero and I'm printing TX uh, send to Q and I'm going to print a status after this print message. So I get the status by using a long variable. So I'm saying long OK equals to XQ send. So let's go over to the XQ send, see what it does. The first parameter is the Q handle. So which Q do you want to send it to? The second parameter is the item. So which item uh, do you want to copy from? So this is a pointer. So the number of bytes that you said your item was, it's going to copy that that many bytes from this pointer. The third parameter is how long are you willing to wait to send the item to the queue? So if the queue is not full, this XQ send will immediately return. And if the queue is full, you're saying wait 500 milliseconds. And if the queue is still full, then the status returned will be false. So this is simply a print message that's saying if the OK variable is true, print OK. Otherwise, it's going to print false. So let's go over this, see how it works. So as you see, we sent one item on the queue. We sent second item on the queue. The third time is waiting a little bit longer because it's this 500 uh, uh, ticks delay uh, for us to fail. So as you see, the OK OK printed pretty fast and the failed takes time to print. So this uh, demo so far demonstrates that if your queue depth is two, you can send two items to the queue before the X queue send will begin to fail. Okay, so now let's go ahead and receive item from the queue. Okay, so now we will never fail because as soon as we queue an item, it's going to immediately, uh, if we are toss uh, relatively immediately, is going to go over to this uh, task and the Rx task is going to dequeue the item. So let's go ahead and run this and uh, make sure we understand what's happened so far. So the moment we queue an item, it's going to print the status OK. So this, this process is going to keep going because now the XQ send will never fail because there's a consumer. We are producing an item and there's a consumer on the other side uh, uh, consuming the item. Now, the next thing I want you to notice is uh, TX would send the item to the queue and after sending the item to the queue it's going to print OK immediately after. So it's going to print OK over here. So let's change the order a little bit. So let's run this again and, the, and what I want you to notice so far is we say TXN to Q, 
we send it to the queue and then um, we print the status immediately. So the order of code execution is known. Okay, so TX will send it to the queue. The next message is okay. And then we go over to the VTAS delay, which um, gives the RX type task uh, time to run. Now, this code execution was predictable because the task priorities are the same. So this tutorial is the details of the queue. So one of the details I want you to notice is let's say that our consumer had higher priority. So when I create a task, I'm setting the priority of this task to higher than the producer. So the consumer has higher priority than the producer. So now, this is what we got when both tasks had same priority. So both, both tasks with same priority gave us this. What about when Rx task has higher priority? Let's see what we get now. Compile the program. And I'm going to run the program. And what I've got is the following. And let's see what is the difference. So before we, the TX task would print this message and then OK. Now what's interesting that has happened now is the TX task sent to the queue and before it even printed the OK message, the RX task came in and printed this message. The reason why this happens is because when the TX task sends an item on the queue, what you end up doing is your free R toss takes control and it realizes that the item that you've sent has woken up the task that was waiting for the item and it has higher priority. And because this receiving task has higher priority, right within the execute send, it switches the task over to this and we end up printing this message before we even get to print the next uh, message or go to the next line of code. And the final thing I want you to learn about the queues is the significance of the timeout when you're receiving an item from the queue. So we know this one, um, it will fail. So if my queue size is two, we know that XQ send will fail after this timeout when we try to send the third item on the queue. The significance of XQ receive is sort of the opposite. So what the XQ receive does is XQ receive uh, tells FreeRTOS that we're willing to wait 500 ticks. And if we don't get anything, we will get over here. Now, this is not the, uh, don't confuse this with uh, the timer, timeout if the item is already there. If the queue you're trying to receive the item from already has an item, this timeout doesn't play a role at all. We will immediately get the item back. This XQ receive, uh, if there's no item in the queue, only then we will wait 500 ticks maximum. So let's go ahead and comment out these three lines of code, which is basically the TX task sending the item onto the queue. And we will notice that every 500 ticks, uh, maybe a second or two in, in my simulator case, it's going to go over to this message and print it out. So before, if you noticed, uh, we would get uh, this message immediately after the TX queued, TX queued, uh, TX task queued an item. 
In this case, we're going to get this message every 500 ticks, again, a couple of uh, seconds in my simulator of free RTOS, we're going to get this message. So this timeout only plays a part if the queue is empty. So again, for the sending portion, the timeout only plays a part if the queue is full. For the receiving portion, the timeout only plays a part if the queue is empty. So this tutorial basically covered uh, the X queue send and receive, the significance of the depth of the queue and the significance of the timeout. And remember that the task priority sort of dictates which tasks to run. So if the TX task is queuing item for uh, an RX task and the RX task has higher priority, uh, immediately after the TX task will queue an item, uh, FreeRTOS will switch over to this task because it has higher priority. So the queues are, are not, not just um, a simple mechanism from one task to another. The task priorities also play a part in determining which tasks should run. And you can watch uh, more videos on my uh, YouTube channel or you can visit the uh, website which has uh, more tutorials about FreeRTOS. Thank you.